The demo scene is an international computer art subculture focused on producing demos, self-contained, sometimes extremely small, computer programs that produce audiovisual presentations. The purpose of a demo is to show off programming, visual art, and musical skills. Demos and other Demoscene productions are shared at festivals known as demo parties, voted on by those who attend, and released online. The Demoscene's roots are in the home computer revolution of the late 1970s, and the subsequent advent of software cracking. Crackers altered the code of video games to remove copy protection, claiming credit by adding introduction screens of their own crack tros". They soon started competing for the best visual presentation of these editions. Through the making of intros and standalone demos, a new community eventually evolved, independent of the gaming and software sharing scenes. Topic <laughs> Concept Prior to the popularity of IBM PC compatibles, most home computers of a given line had relatively little variance in their basic hardware, which made their capabilities practically identical. Therefore, the variations among demos created for one computer line were attributed to programming alone, rather than one computer having better hardware. This created a competitive environment in which Demoscene groups would try to outperform each other in creating outstanding effects, and often to demonstrate why they felt one machine was better than another for example Commodore 64 or Amiga versus Atari 8-bit Family or Atari Street. Demo writers went to great lengths to get every last bit of performance out of their target machine. Where games and application writers were concerned with the stability and functionality of their software, the demo writer was typically interested in how many CPU cycles a routine would consume and, more generally, how best to squeeze great activity onto the screen. Writers went so far as to exploit known hardware errors to produce effects that the manufacturer of the computer had not intended. The perception that the demo scene was going to extremes and charting new territory added to its draw. Topic: Categories. There are several categories demos are informally classified into, the most important being the division between freeform demos and size-restricted intros, a difference visible in the competitions of nearly any demo party. The most typical competition categories for intros are the 64K intro and the 4K intro, where the size of the executable file is restricted to 65,536 and 4,096 bytes, respectively. In other competitions the choice of platform is restricted, only 8-bit computers like the Atari 800 or Commodore 64, or the 16-bit Amiga or Atari Street. Such restrictions provide a challenge for coders, musicians and graphics artists, to make a device do more than was intended in its original design. History The earliest computer programs that have some resemblance to demos and demo effects can be found among the so-called display hacks. Display hacks predate the Demoscene by several decades, with the earliest examples dating back to the early 1950s. Demos in the Demoscene sense began as software crackers, signatures, that is, crack screens and crack intros attached to software whose copy protection was removed. The first crack screens appeared on the Apple II in the late 1970s and early 1980s, and they were often nothing but plain text screens crediting the cracker or their group. Gradually, these static screens evolved into increasingly impressive-looking introductions containing animated effects and music. Eventually, many cracker groups started to release intro-like programs separately, without being attached to unlicensed software. 
These programs were initially known by various names, such as letters or messages, but they later came to be known as demos. In 1980, Atari, Inc. began using a looping demo with visual effects and music to show off the features of the Atari 400s computers in stores. At the 1985 Consumer Electronics Show, Atari showed a Demoscene style demo for its latest 8 bit computers that alternated between a 3D walking robot and a flying spaceship, each with its own music, and animating larger objects than typically seen on those systems. The two sections were separated by the Atari logo. The program was released to the public. Also in 1985, a large, spinning, checkered ball, Casting a translucent shadow was the signature demo of what the hardware was capable of when Commodore's Amiga was announced. Simple demo like music collections were put together on the C64 in 1985 by Charles Deenan, inspired by crack intros, using music taken from games and adding some homemade color graphics. In the following year, the movement now known as the Demoscene was born. The Dutch groups 1001 Crew and the Judges, both Commodore 64 based, are often mentioned as the earliest demo groups. Whilst competing with each other in 1986, they both produced pure demos with original graphics and music involving more than just casual work, and used extensive hardware trickery. At the same time demos from others, such as Anthony Crowther, had started circulating on CompuNet in the United Kingdom. On the ZX Spectrum, Caster Cracking Group released their first demo called Caster Intro in 1986. The ZX Spectrum demo scene was slow to start, but it started to rise in the late 1980s, most noticeably in Eastern Europe. topic culture The Demoscene is mainly a European phenomenon and is predominantly male. It is a competition-oriented subculture with groups and individual artists competing against each other in technical and artistic excellence. Those who achieve excellence are dubbed elite, while those who do not follow the Demoscene's implicit rules are called Lamers. Such rules emphasize creativity over ripping or else licensing the works of others, having good contacts within the scene, and showing effort rather than asking for help. Both this competitiveness and the sense of cooperation among Demosceners have led to comparisons with the earlier hacker culture in academic computing. The Demoscene is a closed subculture, which seeks and receives little mainstream public interest. As of 2010, the size of the scene was estimated at some 10,000. In the early days, competition came in the form of setting records, like the number of bobs glitter objects on the screen per frame, or the number of DYCP different y character position scrollers on a C64. These days, there are organized competitions, or compos, held at demo parties, although there have been some online competitions as well. It has also been common for disc mags to have voting based charts which provide ranking lists for the best coders, graphicians, musicians, demos, and other things. However, the respect for charts has diminished since the 1990s. Party-based competitions usually require the artist or a group member to be present at the event. The winners are selected by a public voting amongst the visitors and awarded at a prize-giving ceremony at the end of the party. Competitions at a typical demo event include a demo compo, an intro compo usually 4 kilobytes and 64 kilobytes, a graphics compo and a music compo. Most parties also split some categories by platform, format or style. There are no criteria or rules the voters should be bound by, and a visitor typically just votes for those entries that made the biggest impression on them. 
In the old demos, the impression was often attempted with programming techniques introducing new effects and breaking performance records in old effects. The emphasis has moved from technical excellence to more artistic values such as overall design, audiovisual impact, and mood. In recent years, an initiative to award demos in an alternative way arose by the name of the Scene.org Awards. The essential concept of the awards was to avoid the subjectivity of mass voting at parties, and select a well-renowned jury to handle the task of selecting the given year's best productions on several aspects, such as best graphics or best 64K intro. This award was cancelled in 2012. Topic: Groups. Demosceners typically organize in small, tightly knit groups centered around a coder, programmer, a musician, and a graphician, graphics designer. Various other supporting roles exist, and groups can grow to dozens of people. But most demos are actually created by a small number of people. Groups always have names, and similarly, the individual members pick a handle by which they will be addressed in the large community. While the practice of using handles rather than real names is a borrowing from the cracker, wares culture, where it serves to hide the identity of the cracker from law enforcement, in the demoscene oriented toward legal activities it mostly serves as a manner of self-expression. Group members tend to self-identify with the group, often extending their handle with their group's name, following the patterns, handle of group, or handle, group. topic parties A demo party is an event that gathers demosceners and other computer enthusiasts to partake in competitions called demoscene compos of demos, short audiovisual presentations of computer art. A typical demo party is a non-stop event spanning a weekend, providing the visitors a lot of time to socialize. The competing works, at least those in the most important competitions, are usually shown at night, using a video projector and loudspeakers. The most important competition is usually the demo compo. Concept The visitors of a demo party often bring their own computers to compete and show off their works. To this end, most parties provide a large hall with tables, electricity and usually a local area network connected to the Internet. In this respect, many demo parties resemble LAN parties, and many of the largest events also gather gamers and other computer enthusiasts in addition to demosceners. A major difference between a real demo party and a LAN party is that demosceners typically spend more time socializing often outside the actual party hall than in front of their computers. Large parties have often tried to come up with alternative terms to describe the concept to the general public. While the events have always been known as demo parties, copy parties, or just parties, by the subculture itself, they are often referred to as computer conferences, computer fairs, computer festivals, computer art festivals, youngsters' computer events, or even geek gatherings, or nerd festivals, by the mass media and the general public. Demoscene events are most frequent in continental Europe, with around 50 parties every year. In comparison, the United States only has two or three each year. Most events are local, gathering demo makers mostly from a single country, while the largest international parties, such as Breakpoint and Assembly, attract visitors from all over the globe. Most demo parties are relatively small in size, with the number of visitors varying from dozens to a few hundred. The largest events typically gather thousands of visitors, although most of them have little or no connection to the demoscene. 
In that aspect, the scene separates pure parties, which abandons non-scene related activities and promotion, from crossover parties. Topic: History. Demo parties started to appear in the 1980s in the form of copy parties, where software pirates and demo makers gathered to meet each other and share their software. Competitions did not become a major aspect of the events until the early 1990s. Copy parties mainly pertained to the Amiga and C64 scene. As the PC compatibles started to take over the market, the difficulties in easily making nice demos and intros increased. Along with increased police crackdowns on copying of copyrighted software, the underground copy parties were gradually replaced by slightly higher profile events that came to be known as demo parties. However, some of the old school Demosinas still prefer to use the word copy party even for today's demo parties. During the 1990s, the focus of the event shifted away from illegal activities into demo making and competitions. The copying of copyrighted material was often explicitly prohibited by the organizers, and many events also forbade the consumption of alcohol. However, illegal copying and boozing still continued to take place, although in a less public form. Three well-known and appreciated large-scale demo parties were established in the early 1990s, the party in Denmark, assembly in Finland and the gathering in Norway. Taking place every year and gathering thousands of visitors, these parties used to be the leading demoscene events in this period. Assembly still retains this status today. The gathering continues to be organized yearly as a generic, computer party, but most of the Demosiners now prefer revision in Germany, which takes place at the same time. The emergence of high profile demo parties gave rise to phenomena that were not always well welcomed by the scene. The events started to attract unaffiliated computer enthusiasts who were often generally referred to as lamers by the original attendants. A particularly visible group in the large gatherings since the mid-1990s have been the LAN gamers, who often have very little interest in the democene and mainly use the party facilities for playing multiplayer computer games. However, many of today's democeners received their first interest for demos and demo making from a visit to a large demo party. Topic: Common properties. Parties usually last from two to four days, most often from Friday to Sunday, to ensure that seniors who work or study are also able to attend. Small parties under 100 attendants usually take place in cultural centers or schools, whereas larger parties over 400 to 500 people typically take place in sports halls or concert halls. Entrance fees are usually between 10 euros and 40 euros given the size and location of the party. During the 90s it was common practice in many countries to allow females to enter the party for free mostly due to the low concentration of female attendees, which is usually under 20%, albeit most parties still enforced an ''only vote with ticket'' rule, which means that an attendee who got in free was only able to vote with a paid ticket. This practice was largely abandoned in the 2010s. Attendees are allowed to bring their desktop computer along, but this is by no means a necessity and is usually omitted by most seniors, especially those who travel long distance. Those who have computer-related jobs may even regard a demo party as a well-deserved break from sitting in front of a computer. For those who do bring a computer, it is becoming increasingly common to bring a laptop or some sort of handheld device rather than a complete desktop PC. 
Partygoers often bring various senseless gadgets to parties to make their desk space look unique, this can be anything from a disco ball or a plasma lamp to a large LED display panel complete with a scrolling message about how «elite» its owner is. Many visitors also bring large loudspeakers for playing music. This kind of activity is particularly common among new partygoers, while the more experienced attendees tend to prefer a more quiet and relaxed atmosphere. Those who need housing during the party are often offered a separate, sleeping room, usually an isolated empty room with some sort of carpet or mats, where the attendees are able to sleep, separated from the noise. Most seniors prefer bringing sleeping bags for this, as well as air mattresses or sleeping pads. Parties that do not offer a sleeping room generally allow seniors to sleep under the tables. Party places often become decorated by visitors with flyers and banners. These all serve promotional reasons, in most cases to advertise a certain group, but sometimes to create promotion for a given Demoscene product, such as a demo or a Discmig, possibly to be released later at the party. A major portion of the events at a demo party often takes place outdoors. Demosceners usually spend considerable time outside to have a beer and talk, or engage into some sort of open-air activity such as barbecuing or sport, such as hardware throwing or soccer. It is also a common tradition to gather around a bonfire during the night, usually after the compos. In recent years, many parties were available for spectators through the Internet. This tradition was first started by the live team of Demoscene.tv, who broadcast from the event live or created footage for a post mortem video report. This has since been ostensibly replaced by the SceneSat radio crew, who provide live streaming radio shows from parties, and larger parties now offer their own dedicated streaming video solution. Topic. List of demo parties Note, year ranges might include years when the party wasn't organized, but was organized both before and after. Topic. Influence Although demos are still a more or less obscure form of art even in the traditionally active Demoscene countries, the scene has influenced areas such as computer games industry and new media art. A great deal of European game programmers, artists, and musicians have come from the Demoscene, often cultivating the learned techniques, practices, and philosophies in their work. For example, the Finnish company Remedy Entertainment, known for the Max Payne series of games, was founded by the PC group Future Crew, and most of its employees are former or active Finnish demosceners. Sometimes demos even provide direct influence even to game developers that have no Demoscene affiliation, for instance, Will Wright names Demoscene as a major influence on the Maxis game Spore, which is largely based on procedural content generation. Similarly, at QuakeCon in 2011, John Carmack noted that he "...thinks highly." of people who do 64K intros, as an example of artificial limitations encouraging creative programming. Jerry Holkins from Penny Arcade claimed to have an "...abiding love," for the Demoscene, and noted that it is "...stuff worth knowing." Certain forms of computer art have a strong affiliation with the Demoscene. Tracker music, for example, originated in the Amiga games industry but was soon heavily dominated by Demoscene musicians. Producer Adam Fielding claims to have Tracker, Demoscene roots. Currently, there is a major tracking scene separate from the actual Demoscene. A form of static computer graphics where Demosceners have traditionally excelled is pixel art. See Art Scene for more information on the related subculture. Over the years, desktop computer hardware capabilities have improved by orders of magnitude, and so for most programmers, tight hardware restrictions are no longer a common issue. 
Nevertheless, Demosinas continue to study and experiment with creating impressive effects on limited hardware. Since handheld consoles and cellular phones have comparable processing power or capabilities to the desktop platforms of old such as low-resolution screens which require pixel art, or very limited storage and memory for music replay, many demosinas have been able to apply their niche skills to develop games for these platforms, and earn a living doing so. One particular example is Angry Birds, whose lead designer Jaco Ayasalo was an active and well known Demosina in the 90s. Some attempts have been made to increase the familiarity of demos as an art form. For example, there have been demo shows, demo galleries, and Demosine related books, sometimes even TV programs introducing the subculture and its works. The Museum IT Cume in Linköping, Sweden, has an exhibition about the Demosine. <laughs> <laughs> Video games industry Fourplayers.de reported that, "...numerous", demo and intro programmers, artists, and musicians were employed in the games industry by 2007. Video game companies with Demoscene members on staff included Digital Illusions, Starbreeze, Ascaron, 49 Games, Remedy, Techland, Lionhead Studios, Bugbear, Digital Reality, Guerrilla Games and Akella. Topic. See also Algorithmic composition Computer art scene Hacker subculture Minimalism computing Netlabel Topic. Specific platforms Amiga demos Commodore 64 demos ZX Spectrum demos Machak Topic Websites Scene Org Mod Archive